top global scientists are sounding a planetary code red, a NASA-level warning. Several of Earth's most vital systems are about to hit their breaking point and could totally collapse, leading to worldwide chaos. Could the biblical stories of great floods and earth-shattering events be distorted memories of past tipping points? Let's reveal the truth before it all goes in a split second. You know how, when you hear about heat records being broken, it happens so often now that most people just scroll past it on their phones without even blinking? It's like, oh, another hot day, what else is new? But here's the worst part. Every small bit of that extra heat, every fraction of a degree warmer our planet gets, matters a lot. Hidden inside that extra heat are these super-sensitive, almost invisible, hair-trigger switches built into Earth's biggest and most important systems. The systems that control our weather, our oceans, and even the air we breathe. The same systems that are super important for all life on Earth to survive. And if just one of those switches flips, everything could start falling apart. If we push these systems too far with all the warming we're causing, it's like pushing over a domino that's barely standing. Once it starts to fall, it's almost impossible to stop. Scientists have a special name for these dangerous points of no return. They call them tipping points. And once we cross one of these tipping points, the change doesn't just stop, it actually speeds up by itself, racing forward with no one steering, totally out of our hands. Imagine giant glaciers, miles thick, suddenly starting to melt faster and slide into the ocean at huge speeds. Picture huge ancient rainforests, the lungs of our planet, drying up and dying, no longer making enough rain to keep themselves alive. And think about massive deep sea ocean currents, like giant belts moving warm and cold water around the world, suddenly stopping their important journey. It's like Earth's main stabilizers just quit working. The really creepy part is, scientists say this isn't a problem for far off future generations. It's not something our grandkids might have to face. No. The time to worry is right now, this very minute. Here's a wild and hard to believe fact. The Earth's average global temperature already went past the 1.5 degrees Celsius warming line back in the year 2024. That 1.5 degree line was supposed to be the big red do not cross, warning that world leaders and scientists agreed on years ago at big events like the Paris Agreement. We weren't supposed to go over I'd ever, but we did. And now, the World Meteorological Organization, a group that closely watches Earth's weather, expects the planet will stay above that dangerous 1.5 degrees Celsius line again in 2025. That once distant red line, that big warning sign, isn't far anymore. It's here. It's real. And it's turning what used to be a science debate into a serious, real-life worry for regular people everywhere. What does it really mean for us, for our future, if we keep going past these critical temperature limits? Some people online still try to argue that Earth's climate has always changed and that this is all just natural. But the speed of change today is what has scientists super worried it's happening way faster than most changes in Earth's long history. Could old stories about giant floods drowning whole lands like Atlantis actually be twisted memories from past times when Earth systems crossed horrifying tipping points? That idea alone gives you chills and it's a mystery we'll come back to. So, what are these giant Earth systems that are close to disaster? Scientists are especially worried about four huge systems big stabilizers that keep our world steady. Think of them like the main blocks in a huge stone arc if you remove even one. The whole thing can shift, groan, and then totally fall apart. These four giants are, first, Greenland's massive ice sheet, a frozen mountain of water miles thick that, if it melted, would raise sea levels by a shocking amount. Second is the huge West Antarctic ice sheet, another frozen giant, with the power to cause sea levels to rise fast. Third is the Atlantic overturning circulation, also called AMOC, a system of ocean currents like a giant river that carries warm water north and cold water south, playing a huge part in keeping Europe's weather mild and shaping weather everywhere. And fourth is the Amazon rainforest, the biggest and most biodiverse forest in the world. 
It makes its own weather and stores huge amounts of carbon, helping to cool the planet. When warming pushes any of these four giants past their tipping point, a scary thing called self-reinforcing feedbacks begins. That's a fancy way of saying the damage starts to speed up on its own, even if we stop all our warming pollution right away. For example, when ice melts, the dark water or land underneath absorbs more sunlight than the bright white ice, making things warmer, which melts more ice, and so on. It's a bad cycle. Forests, when they lose moisture and dry out from too much heat and not enough rain, are more likely to catch fire. And when they burn, they send all that stored carbon back into the air, which causes more warming, which dries out more forests. See the pattern? And those important ocean currents? They weaken because the differences in water, temperature, and salt that power them start to disappear in a warming world. It's like the motor that runs the current starts to die. But the danger gets even worse, even more frightening, because these four giant systems don't work alone. They affect each other. They're linked, like a super complicated set of gears. One problem in one place can cause a huge mess somewhere else. For example, all that fresh water from Greenland's melting ice sheet can slow down or mess up the Atlantic currents. And if those currents change, it can totally mess with rainfall patterns far away even in the Amazon. If the Amazon doesn't get enough rain, it dries out, becomes more like grassland, and stops storing as much carbon. A dying Amazon could even start releasing lots of carbon, making warming worse. Scientists call this chain reaction a tipping cascade. That means one big change in one part of the world can cause other systems to fail too, leading to global trouble in what, for Earth, is just a blink of an eye. It's a chain reaction that, once it starts, might be impossible to stop. Earth has had wild climate swings in the past from times when the whole planet was frozen to times when the poles had no ice. Are we accidentally bringing one of those extreme events back, but this time, because of us? The warnings from Earth's ancient past are there, and we'll talk about them again. The idea that our planet's life support systems are like a huge, shaky Jenga tower, with every degree of warming pulling out another block, is scary enough. But now scientists say the way we get to those dangerous temperatures matters just as much as the final number. It's not just about where we end up, it's about the crazy ride we take getting there. Most of the time, when people talk about climate targets, like that big 1.5 degrees Celsius limit from the Paris Agreement, they focus on the final goal-making. Sure, Earth doesn't stay hotter than that number forever. But what scientists are now warning us loudly about is that the path to that number, even briefly going over it matters just as much, maybe even more, when it comes to these tipping points. This is where something tricky and hidden called overshoot comes in. Think of it like walking a very thin tightrope across a deep canyon. Your goal is to get to the other side without falling. That 1.5 degree mark is like saying, don't sway too far or you'll fall off. Overshoot is like wobbling too far to one side even if you come back to the middle. That big wobble might be enough to set off a chain reaction. Even if the extra heat only lasts a few years, it could be enough to trigger huge, permanent damage in Earth's biggest systems. We already saw one of these wobbles in 2024 when the global temperature temporarily went above 1.5 degrees Celsius. And the really worst part? Even if people managed to cool the planet back down after a short period of overshoot, the damage to these giant Earth systems might already be locked in for hundreds or even thousands of years. Why is that? Because those self-reinforcing loops that cause tipping points like ice melting faster as it shrinks don't just stop when the planet cools a little. In fact, they usually don't work in reverse. You can't untoast a piece of bread or unbreak an egg. Once Greenland's ice sheet starts melting badly, just cooling the air doesn't bring back all that ice quickly. It took thousands of years to build, but it can melt away much faster. To figure out how serious these overshoots are, scientists use powerful computer models. Now, some people online like to say, it's just a guess from a computer. How can that be trusted? And yes, predicting the future of the whole planet's climate is really hard. But these models are not random guesses. They use the best science we have, based on real laws of physics and chemistry. 
They let scientists test out different what-if situations by focusing on Earth's most fragile and important systems like Greenland, West Antarctica, the Atlantic Ocean Currents, and the Amazon Rainforest. And what these models show is truly worrying. They say that the higher we go during an overshoot, how hot it gets, and the longer we stay above 1.5 degrees, how many years, the greater the chance that one of these giant systems will hit its tipping point and begin to collapse on its own. And if we go past 2 degrees Celsius during that overshoot, the chance of a dangerous tipping point rises even faster like a rocket taking off. People who follow climate news often ask, if this is so serious, why aren't world leaders treating it like a world emergency? This risky math, this frightening idea of rising chances, is the main message in a brand new study from top scientists around the world. Some of them work at famous places like Imperial College London and the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research in Germany. These scientists did something really smart. They linked together four powerful climate equations in their model. Each one represented one of Earth's major systems. Greenland's ice, West Antarctica's ice, the Atlantic currents, and the Amazon rainforest. By connecting them, they could see how these systems affect each other when temperatures spike up and, hopefully, drop back down later. One of the scientists, Dr. Robin Lambeau, explained the results very clearly. Our study shows why cutting emissions this decade is so important. If we miss the Paris Agreement target, we might reshape Earth systems for hundreds of years. Their models showed that even a short overshoot could be enough to start major melting in Greenland or make the huge West Antarctic ice sheet start breaking apart. It could dry out the Amazon rainforest so badly that it turns into grassland and loses its power to store carbon. And it could badly slow down the Atlantic conveyor current, the one that keeps Europe's weather steady. And because these big systems push and pull on each other, a problem in one could trigger others. That's what scientists call a tipping cascade. A single big change could spark a chain reaction that spreads worldwide. It sounds like a scene from a disaster movie. Could old stories about giant floods, dark skies, or great famines come from real memories of these tipping points going off long ago? It's a horrifying idea, and it makes today's warnings even more serious. Another expert from the Potsdam Institute, Annika Ernest Hogner, gave more chilling news. She said, with every tenth of a degree above 1.5 Celsius, the risk of tipping points grows. That's right, not full degrees, just little tenths. Every small rise makes the danger worse. Then she shared the scariest part. If we hit 2.6 degrees Celsius by the end of the century, which is what current climate promises suggest, the risk gets huge. That's way into the danger zone where the odds of multiple tipping points going off becomes very high. At this point, many people feel hopeless or angry. Some say, if scientists know all this, and governments know it too, why aren't they doing way more to stop it? Others just feel powerless like the problem is too big to solve. It's a hard truth to face. But just like with a serious medical problem, we need to listen even if the diagnosis is horrifying. These new studies give us a clear message. The danger is real, the clock is ticking, and the time to act is now before we tip the balance forever. When the research team ran their computer models to see what might happen if global temperatures went up and never came back down below the 1.5 degrees Celsius limit by the year 2100, a situation that sadly looks more and more likely if we don't make big changes Soon they found something truly frightening. In almost 24% of their tests, that's nearly a one in four chance. At least one of Earth's four major systems like Greenland's ice or the Amazon rainforest was pushed into a collapse that couldn't be stopped. A one in four chance of tipping something that may never return to normal. Think about it like playing Russian roulette with a four shot gun. But instead of risking one person's life, we're gambling with the life support systems of our entire planet. Some people hear that number and say, see, that means there's still a 75% chance everything will be fine. But most scientists and more and more people around the world look at that 25% risk and see it as incredibly dangerous. No one would choose to take that kind of chance with something so important. 
It's just too risky. But it gets worse. The researchers then looked at a more troubling scenario where global temperatures rise much higher, getting close to 3 degrees Celsius, which is sadly not far from the 2.6 degrees we're currently headed toward, and only slowly drop back down over many decades. In this case, the models showed a terrifying 45% chance, almost like flipping a coin of causing a major, permanent change to at least one of those big Earth systems by the year 2300. That's almost half. Even if we later manage to cool the planet again, the damage might already be done, and the chain reaction might already be in motion. Tessa Moeller, one of the lead authors of this important study, works with some of the world's best climate science teams. She explained it clearly. Our results show that to really lower the risk of tipping points in the long term, we have to not only stop increasing emissions, but reach and stay at net zero. That means we can't just slow down, we have to balance the amount of greenhouse gas we release with how much we remove from the air, and then we have to keep it there. She added something even more serious. If we stick with current plans, the ones leading us to 2.6 degrees we could lock in a 45% chance of these disasters by 2300, even if we cool things down later. That's the part that leaves many people feeling scared. Are we already on a path that even if we fix it later still, leads to a broken world for our great-great-grandkids? This is why time matters so much. Scientists are already seeing signs that the Atlantic Ocean's important current system is slowing down. It's like a warning light flashing on the planet's control panel. Earth might not be able to handle as much stress as we once thought. This isn't just about the future, this is happening now. If we want to stop things from getting worse, we need to take big action right away, not in 2040 or 2050, but right now, in the 2020s. Every year we wait. Every year we keep adding more pollution. We raise the chances of tipping into disaster. It's like we're making the fall off the tightrope more likely every single day. Some people online like to point fingers saying, what about China or India? They're still using coal. And yes, this is a worldwide problem that needs global answers, which makes it very hard to solve. But scientists are clear. The countries that polluted the most in the past, the richest one shave to lead the way now. They have the money, the technology, and the responsibility. But here's the small bit of hope in all this bad news. Cutting emissions now gives us something valuable time. Less warming buys us time to invent cleaner energy, to build stronger cities and farms, and to keep Earth's systems from falling too far out of balance. Think about old civilizations like the Maya or Easter Island. They faced big environmental problems too. They didn't know about tipping points like we do, but when they pushed nature too far, their societies collapsed. The ruins they left behind remind us that no civilization is too strong to fail. We have something they didn't science. The real question is, will we use it? If we act now, we can slow the dangerous wobble of our planet. We can leave behind a world that may be damaged, but still stable. But if we wait too long, we might leave behind a world that's already breaking, where future generations have no choice but to live with the chaos we caused. Earth is calling for help. Are we finally ready to listen and act like our lives depend on it? Because they do. So, are we already past the point of no return for some of Earth's biggest systems? Or is there still time to pull back from the brink? What crazy idea might actually save us? Hit like, subscribe, and tell us what you think humanity needs to do right now before it's truly too late.